collective versus the individual. Juxtaposing smartphone generated architectural representations and African Muslim spaces. Good day. I'm Peter Grevenstein. Uh, the paper was co written with Professor Amira Osman. We're from the Department of Architecture and Industrial Design from Swan University of Technology in Pretoria, South Africa. Local and global are distinguished by scale. It is either zoomed in or out. Global would be the general and local the specific. Both operate on familiarity. Dictionary.com explains. Versus is either as compared to one of two choices or in contrast with. The theme of the study is that collective identity is valued over individual expression in diverse cultures expressed in similarity observed in architecture during certain time eras across geographic borders and beyond the restrictive Eurocentric viewpoint. One wonders how interchangeable local and global has become in the social media age. Who we will be looking at, we research Muslim communities, especially with a religious background in Sufism, and the connection is via Professor Osman, who was born and grew up in Sudan. Versus exit level Bachelor of Architecture students consisting of 10 of the South African cultural groups, each with their own language. They represent Gen Z, who grew up with social media, and they are cast as so-called cyber flaneers because they are armed with a smartphone, allowing physical and virtual engagement. Why? We work in the context of the architectural design studio. Human artifacts, be it a mud brick wall or a smartphone or a digital representation, are mirrors of current social structures and current technologies. Designing is about interpreting and reassembling existing ideas that then become a refraction of the mirror image. Finding recognizable patterns informs the design process, assisting in the, re in the rearrangement of the existing. What? We work in the context um, of architecture. We will look at vernacular Northern Sudan context, the essential and incidental attributes of a culture can be articulated and thus become a tool for use in reinterpretation. Religious and cultural belief systems of African Muslims directly influence how the residential architecture manifests and becomes evident in the vernacular built form in Northern Riverian Sudan. Intangible culture one of the main aspects being the unique influence of Sufism and mysticism as a direct influence on the nature of physical artifact. This will be juxtaposed with imagery, which are architectural representations, the outcome of an assignment given to the cyber to document a 50 or 100 year old building with a medium density typology from a curated list in the inner city urban context of Johannesburg and Pretoria in South Africa and Maputo in Mozambique, using available technology on their smartphone to render these images subjectively. The collages become visual representations of how it looks to be simultaneously emerged, emerged in the physical and virtual realms. As a digital manipulation of the photographs depend on current technology, these collages also represent the zeitgeist. What? We will compare the collective versus the individual. The question can be asked, is our local experience a global one? Are African cities really global cities? What is today's global? We are reminded that in large portions of the Middle East and Africa, Globalization has often been equated with westernization and is still widely regarded as an external threat rather than as an opportunity. In the social media age, 
cultural difference is celebrated. Freedom of self-expression and self-curation allows cross-cultural, generic, or global traits. Cultural and religious difference was once developed by the location individuals found themselves in, which affected their life in a particular way. For example, becoming tangible in the, res in the residential architecture of Northern Riviera and Sudan. Currently, all cultures have outposts in each urban environment. Cultural and religious diversity mark global cities. Eck uses the example of the greater Los Angeles, where nearly half the population are foreign born. The Latino population is so large that it was called a Latino subcontinent. The Asian population is represented by many Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Cambodian, and Vietnamese subcultures. Many Muslim Iranian immigrants live there, some dubbing it Irangelis. Religious is represented by Buddhist, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim communities. X describes the modern city. Cities are the very place where we see the effects of global migration and face the questions of identity in a complex multicultural society. Today, there are a multitude of cities that are symbolically the world with all its diversity. And the globalization of people, communications, and transportation have created a world that in many ways is a city. As much as diversity is present, this study wants to underpin that visually, the zeitgeist often produces serialities typologies or self-similar artifacts, be it buildings or anything man-made. A good example of 20th century urban typologies is Christ in Danton Bain's book, Review 111, Typology, Paris, Delhi, Sao Paulo, Athens. They see most buildings that constitute the modern city developed mainly in the 20th century, and each has a direct historical connection with classical modernism. At first glance, the typologies of the four cities look similar. The footprint, scale, height, and part of a city block in a medium density concept, context. If one investigates further, each city developed its own version, each for different reasons. One example is Athens, where building regulations restrict the height. The type is called polykatoikia. This generic modular architecture assures a highly homogeneous urban structure and street space. Its usage, likewise, necessitates only minimal typological modification. Apartment buildings, office blocks, and garages are often deceptively alike. So much so that the name, which means apartment building, has endlessly become a synonym for urban building. The recognizable feature of this building type is the banner of horizontal balconies that extend on each story over the entire length of the building's front facade. That becomes an interface between the building and the street and has local routes for adapting to the hot climate. Um, we will look now at the collective versus the individual and fashion versus architecture. Van Winkel raises the notion of equalization versus differentiation that clothing ourselves suggests. It belongs to the unique properties of fashion that distinction and adaptation are not just opposed values kept in balance, but two sides of the same coin. The dictate of fashion is a peculiar kind of law. Those who conform to it make themselves noticed. Distinction and adaptation also happens in architecture. The individual elements, be it a whole facade or a window detail, would have been found in the same image bank that other architects chose and searched. The image bank here can refer as much to Pinterest as to the 10 books of Vitruvius. Western Mann presents an image of a cultural artifact, the Nike Air Force One Jester XX by Off-White and Nike, and it reads below. With the recurrent derision of authenticity, streetwear has recently completed its takeover of high fashion, flipping the ecosystem of references, taboos, inside jokes. I edit things 3% said architect and fashion mogul Virgil Abloh. I don't want another shoe. I want something that makes me recognize the shoe I already have. When culture is designed by Instagram's infinite scroll, can the familiar be the antidote 
to informational overdose. Robard comments, people imitate each other. All resemblances have a social origin, either through custom, tradition, education, sympathy, obedience, or preset. Any manifestation or expression triggers a certain degree of cont contamination. Fashion plays an important part in this. It merely confirms or sublimates what already exists. The research methodology. Vasalo expresses our research intent. Processes of architectural design and exploring imagery as ways of looking at our immediate surroundings. The most everyday elements to transform them into raw material for the contemporary project. On the one hand, we will look now at values and belief systems. Artifacts, codes, and languages of expression of culture at play of various levels of control and agents of control in the built environment. Through intangible culture, that is values and belief systems, these artifacts, in this case residential architecture, are created um, within. In the Muslim communities, the agents of control are referring to groups and rarely to individuals. There are determined ethical systems where social control is man maintained through social sanctions and people do not want to stand out as being different. Another aspect that ensure not to stand out is frugality. The Sufi believers are not too much concerned about material aspects of life, which relates to another of recurring themes, which is spirituality. And this all allows for homogeneity um, of the built environment. It is expressed through a lack of variety in the built form, the material and the color. It also relates to the fluid use of space, frugality in physical expression and cycles in the use of space. With the Arab nomads, patterns of habitation became nomadic and spaces became multifunctional. In contrast to that, that we have images. Images communicate. Images became the primary tool of communication. It is estimated that Instagram will have 1.4 billion users by 2024. Basala writes, if we speak about the relationship between photography and architecture, it is important to consider the question of technology implicit in the fact that we live in a digital era that generates images to the point where they may be read as texts descriptions, manifestos, and even projects, without which we would be able to understand practically nothing. The singular versus the infinite. Mulner relays how before making doubles was a minor investment in the pre-digital image trading economy. Family and friends would make copies of important events. Mulner continues, today, the concept of doubles or any multiples of images is nearly moot. The image is both singular, a specific file with a specific arrangement of pixels, and infinite. It is no longer reproduced. Perhaps within that, new ontology of photographs, always there and always singular, is available almost anywhere. There are no longer any copies. Contextless. Van Alpen's argument that images circulating on social media lack meaningful context and background becomes clear in this gallery. And often the physical signs are global. KFC or a SUV brand making it difficult to place oneself geographically. Superficiality. Flasser, who sees the technical image as having a tendency to reduce the dimensions of space to the image of space, that is two dimensions. The visual work produced provides limited amounts of meaning, like the tsunami of images on social media. The short atten attention span do not allow for excessive amounts of detailed information, only snippets. The mirror image. The mirror image was one of the most popular ways to collage. Gen Z and the current spirit has pr prioritized the selfie. The mirror symbolizes the obsession with the self. 
Modern technology forces us to gaze at ourselves constantly. From the front camera, which has been a key feature of mobile phones for a decade, due to the cell view, which is automatically turned on for Zoom calls. The emerging themes is similarity versus variety. The context of vernacular beliefs is not to stand out. The context of the smartphone duplicates or the algorithm dictates your feed or the output of your gallery um, is dictated by the filter. Similar patterns are revealed, but as a collective, yet the personal freedom that the overload of information, true or false, it puts the emphasis back to the individual, the one the camera is turned on. Chinese artist Ai Weiwei stated in a recent interview, this is the only time in human history which equips us to be individuals. The overflow of information means we can make our own judgments and express ourselves independently. The reassembly of existing parts. So, like any artifact, be it a bowl or a pair of denim jeans, the architectural object could not only be repeated, but also was meant to be repeatable. And Christ and Gantenbein confirms that the qualitative criterion is likewise important. Only those building types produced in great numbers have a significant impact on the quality of the city. Algorithms. These tools used to manipulate photographs are familiar to the users. They recognize patterns in the digital realm referred to as algorithms. Work explains that an algorithm for present purposes is a finite set of instructions for accomplishing some task, which transforms an initial starting condition into a recognizable end condition. Similarly, Meta's Facebook and Instagram use powerful algorithms to target specific audiences for specific content based on their browsing history. One recognizes one's own interest targeted for one's own consumption. The existing only needs to be consulted and simulated or copied in one's own unique way to fit in and stand out. The physical and the virtual contaminate each other in a similar way as religion, culture, and technology. Our smartphone apps is as much based on societal norms as the vernacular building conventions in Sudan or the refugee from behind their screen in their adopted country can now also be a virtual citizen of their mother country, even the war-torn Sudan. Thank you.